Five years ago, when I had just started taking my YouTube channel seriously, I made one of my most viewed lesson videos to date. It was called Mateus Azato's Pentatonic Shred. I was obsessed with this guy's playing style back then, but I would say in the past two to three years, I took uh, an intentional break from listening to him because I felt like almost everything I was playing was just becoming a ripoff of his playing. In that time, we all know that he took an extended break from Instagram, but now he's back on the platform and posting new content again, which is great to see. Recently, he was interviewed on Rick Beato's channel and that was a really interesting watch, so I'd recommend checking that out. So it's fair to say that he's very much back in the online limelight. It's not like he hasn't been busy during his absence from Instagram. I mean, recently he was playing on the Grammys with Silk Sonic, which was just so insanely cool to see. Anyway, I've been listening to him a lot more lately and I wanted to make a sort of follow-up to that original video that I put out five years ago when I was very baby-faced and new to YouTube. And so today I'm gonna teach you two more pentatonic licks in the style of Matthias Azato. These are not licks that I've necessarily transcribed note for note from his videos. They're more just in the general style of his playing habits. And since I'm going into a lot of detail with each one, I'm gonna split this into a two-part lesson with separate videos. Those of you with active subscription plans at bulletproofguitarplayer.com have access to the tab files, backing track, and three bonus lick lessons in the style of Matthias Azato. If you want to break through the intermediate plateau and reach an advanced level of guitar playing, signing up to the site and working your way through my courses and the bonus content I put out every month will put you on the right track. The links to sign up and choose from a monthly or annual subscription plan are in the description box beneath the video. The two licks you're gonna to learn today sound like this. The first one is what we're gonna learn in this video. Let's hear that again, but slowed down. And let's hear that at an even slower tempo. To break this down, I want to first talk about the theory and how to visualize it on the fretboard and then I'll focus on technique and I'll explain the picking pattern. We'll split this into two parts, starting with this. So we're in the key of E major and soloing with the E major pentatonic scale, which is a five note scale derived from a seven note scale called that's right, the major scale. Matthias is a master at using these scales to create beautiful melodic phrases with, but there are some notes from outside those scales that he'll often incorporate into his lines. And this part of the lick is me trying to demonstrate that and emulate it. But before I explain the notes that are outside of the major pentatonic scale here, let's first learn some fundamental theory behind the major and major pentatonic scales. If you don't know much about music theory, bear with me, I'm gonna do my best to make this as easy to follow along with as possible. So I like to think of the major pentatonic as being like a skeleton of the major scale. I just mentioned that it's a five note scale derived from the seven note scale that is the major scale. The seven notes in the major scale are the root, major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, major seventh, If you're unfamiliar with those terms, you need to learn about intervals, which is something I teach in my Master the Fretboard course. However, for simplicity's sake, let's just call those notes one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The major pentatonic takes notes one, two, three, five, and six from the major scale, and it sounds like this. One, two, three, five, 
sixth. So the notes from the major scale that are absent in the major pentatonic scale formula are the fourth and the seventh. This lick is mostly major pentatonic based, so I am visualizing major pentatonic scale positions, but I'm also very much aware of where those other notes, the fourths and sevenths are all across the fretboard. In fact, this lick does incorporate a seventh in the first half, but we'll get to that soon enough. Let's compare those two scales side by side. Here's the major scale with its seven notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And here's the major pentatonic with its five notes. One, two, three, five, six. Now let's play through the position of the major pentatonic scale that this lick starts in. So grab your guitar, look at the fretboard diagram for reference and play along with me. We're gonna do this with eighth notes. So ready? One, two, three, four. Now I'm going to play through the first part of the lick again and I want you to look at the notes I'm playing to see where it is that I'm placing notes that are not found on that major pentatonic scale diagram. Did you catch them? One was at fret 11 on the high E string which we're not going to count as a note from outside the major pentatonic or major scales because it is part of the major scale, but we also had fret 10 on the high E string. And we also had fret 12 on the G string. So the note on the high E string is D, which would be the flat seventh of the note E. Remember earlier I said that the major scale has a major seventh, which is found a semitone below the root note. That note does appear in this part of the lick, as I said, at fret 11. So that note right there, that's a major seventh. And one semitone above that is the root note E. So remember, if you need to find a major seventh on the fretboard, it's just one semitone, one fret lower than the root note. However, the flat seventh, which is just below that note, is not part of the major or major pentatonic scales. And I'll explain why it's being used here soon but when you're soloing in major keys and you want to find that note, just know that it's a tone below the root note, which on one string is the distance of two frets. You could also view it as one semitone or one fret below the major seventh, which is a semitone or one fret lower than the root note. So root note, major seventh, flat seventh. Moving on, the note at fret 12 on the G string is G. That's the flat third of E. Now both the major pentatonic and major scales have a third, but it's a major third, which in this key is the note G sharp. So to find a flat third on the fretboard when soloing in a major key, you can think of it by locating the major third and then one semitone below that, you'll find the flat third. Or you can think of it as being three frets higher than the root note when looked at on one string. So here's the root note, three frets higher, you'll find a flat third. Now let's talk about the reason behind these notes appearing in a major lick like this one. It's due to the fact that guitar players are very position or shape based improvisers, meaning we are often trying to memorize and visualize different patterns of notes across the fretboard when soloing so that we don't get lost on the fretboard. And when you play with a certain set of scale positions for long enough, you develop habits around them, phrasing notes in a certain way, picking with the same patterns, so on and so forth, things of that nature. When soloing with the minor pentatonic scale, guitar players will often extend it to include a note called a flat five, which when added to the scale formula makes it the blues scale. The flat five in position one of the minor pentatonic appears on the A and G strings. Okay. 
So that was me adding a flat five to position one of the E minor pentatonic, making it the blues scale. But let's just look at position one of the E minor pentatonic on its own. Now let's look at position one of the E major pentatonic. You can see that it's in a different part of the fretboard, but visually, just purely as a shape, it looks identical. So getting to my point now, when guitar players then go to solo with the major pentatonic scale, the habits they've developed from playing with the minor pentatonic and using that flat five like so, those habits tend to cross over into the major pentatonic when they're playing with that. And that is what's happened here in our E major pentatonic lick with the note on the G string at fret 12. It's not a flat five in this context, but still it feels effortless to include it anyway because I'm so used to physically playing what that note would be in minor keys and in blues when visualizing minor pentatonic scale positions. And as for the note on the high E string, that flat seven, where does that come from? Well, if you traced it back far enough, you could argue that it's a Stevie Ray Vaughan influence. When Stevie played solos with the minor pentatonic and blues scales, he would very often throw in a note called a flat second or a flat ninth in that location of the scale position on the high E string. So here's what an SRV lick using that note would sound like in the minor pentatonic scale. And if I transfer the location of that additional note to the major pentatonic and play something similar, you can hear that it still sounds cool. It has a different relationship to the root note. It's a flat seventh rather than a flat second, but it still works great. Now we'll move on to the second half of this lick and then discuss technique. But just to remind you, if you are serious about finally getting to grips with music theory and finding out how and why it can help you to steadily chip your way through what I like to call the lost intermediate plateau, where you've been at the same level for months, years, or even a decade plus, and just don't have a clue what to practice in order to eventually reach an advanced level of musicianship as a guitar player, the links to my website and online courses are in the description box. If you are in that lost intermediate gray area, I would strongly recommend starting with the first course, that's the Master the Fretboard course. You can get streamable access with a subscription plan or you can purchase it with a one-time payment if recurring payment plans aren't really your thing. Okay, let's refresh our memories and listen to the second part of the lick again. <laughs> Now, theory-wise, there's not too much to talk about here. You're basically just moving down to another position of the major pentatonic scale, this one here. And you're descending it and then moving down again to end on the note B. But let's listen to it again paired with the first part of the lick. That's the theory covered, now let's talk about technique. Actually, before we do that, if you're new here and you're learning something, please consider subscribing to my channel. A lot of you watching my videos aren't subscribed and it only takes a second to scroll down and click that button, so I'd really appreciate it if you could do that and help me hit you know, a million subscribers before my 74th birthday. That would be, that would be sweet. A lot of this is alternate picked, but not all of it. So again, let's break it into two halves and I'll explain my picking patterns. So. I pick that flat seventh on the high E string twice in this part, this note here. Now you start at fret 11 on the D string with a downstroke and from there up until that second flat seventh, it's all alternate picking. So constant down up, down up, down up until that second flat seventh appears. So that's gonna look and sound like this. Pay attention to my picking hand. Once again, Yeah. 
So I've just finished by picking that second flat seventh at fret 10 with a downstroke, but you're then gonna pull off to fret nine. Then you're gonna pick fret 12 on the B string with a downstroke and pull off again. So let's hear that all together. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down. And then after that, you're gonna play this. So that's an upstroke on the high E, downstroke and pull off on the B, and then another downstroke on the G string. Then after that, the subdivision changes from 16th notes to 16th note triplets, which I guess is more theory based than technique, but allow me to just explain what that means before we continue on with the picking pattern. So if you were to count the beats of the bar at this tempo, quarter notes would sound like this. I'll actually do it a little bit slower than the original tempo. So quarter notes would be one, two, three, four, then eighth notes, one, two, three, four, then sixteenth notes, one, two, three, four, and then sixteenth note triplets. Let's see if I can count and play this at the same time. One, two, three, four. So this lick starts with sixteenth notes, but then it switches to sixteenth note triplets just before the second half. So listen to that again and pay attention to the difference in the subdivisions because that's important to understand if you want to play this lick accurately. So here we go. For the end of that first half where the subdivision changes, these are the notes to play. Now I'm picking this with an upstroke and pull off on the B string then a downstroke followed by an upstroke and pull off on the G. And then a downstroke for that last note on the D string. And I feel like that's perhaps an unorthodox way of picking that. If I was to play that on its own, I think I would naturally pick the first note with a downstroke. But with all of the notes that come before it and the way that I pick them, I seem to end up doing it the way that I just demonstrated anyway. And by the way, don't feel like you necessarily have to pick it the exact same way that I am. Before we move on to the technique for the second half of the lick, I'll play the first part again slowly so that you can pay attention to my picking hand. <laughs> All right, let's look at the picking pattern for the second half. We start with a grace note slide from fret 11 to fret six on the G string. Now, a grace note is one that borrows time from the value of another note, which on guitar means the note itself is barely heard at all. It's more the motion of moving from the grace note to the note that it's borrowing time from that you're actually hearing. So if I just play from the end of the first half going into that grace note slide in the second half, you'll hear how it's basically just the movement of the slide that you hear and not the pitch of the note at fret 11 itself. So this is the note that we're sliding from, but you don't really hear it. As for the picking pattern, it's quite straightforward. Upstroke and pull off on the G string, so it's an upstroke slide and then pull off. Then down up on the D, then down up on the A, and then slide down to fret two with the index finger. Now let's combine that with the first half of the lick. For 
this two-part YouTube lesson, I've put together a batch of bonus content for my subscribers at bulletproofguitarplayer.com, which includes three lick lessons in the style of Matthias Azato, along with the tab files for everything, including these YouTube videos in both Guitar Pro and PDF format, as well as the backing track for you to practice with at home. Please consider subscribing if this lesson was helpful and I will see you in part two.